Hello, we welcome you to this, our service here on the first and Sunday of East Easter. It's a, a common text and a common story in an uncommon time that we share together now. But we, wel we welcome you together as, as we worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of God's blessing who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to read the second reading for, for today. It's a wonderful text from First um, and Peter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for, for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, Word of Life. The Gospel today is a text that we hear in every year on this particular Sunday from the 20th chapter, chapter of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be, be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, and one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, 
Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Risen Lord There are times when the scriptures seem to speak with a clarity that we would not not expect. But here it is. As often as we have heard this, it takes on a new pic picture as we ourselves find ourselves locked in our homes because of fear. For those disciples, it was because they weren't sure what, what the next thing might, might be. It says they were afraid, um, uh, uh, for fear of the Jews. It should, of course, be for fear of the Jewish leaders, because they themselves were Jews. But they didn't know what, what to expect. It was a time of uncertainty. But not only that, it was a time when I just have to wonder what took place in those hours between their, their appearance at, at the tomb and the time when Jesus came and stood among them. There is nothing in any of the four, four Gospels that particularly shows that they understood what it meant that Jesus had been raised. As we, we uh, looked at this last, last week, they didn't see Jesus. Mary did when she was alone in the, uh, the garden, mistaking him to be um, a, um, uh, you know, the gardener. But when he calls, calls his name, she, she believed. But her story would just be added to those who came and, and said, well, we went to the tomb and there was someone dressed in white who told us that he was not here. He is risen. We don't know what that means. We don't know how that's going to work, work out. And we don't know what it means for, for, and for us. I imagine that there were times that in the in those uh, uh, moments when either it was spoken or unspoken, but they had replayed the events in the past past uh, weeks, days, months, years, all those times that they shared. There was indeed a note of grief. They had seen Jesus die on the cross. They didn't know what, what to expect. I suppose that there was some second guessing of themselves, playing the game of what if. If only we had perhaps stayed awake and prayed with Jesus in the garden when he had asked us to, something different might have taken place. If only we had brought more swords along to that gar garden instead of the uh, uh, the one uh, that is mentioned in um, in Luke's account, perhaps we could have held off the the temple guards, and Jesus would would still still be alive, and safe, among us. Perhaps they were th th thinking of things like, why why didn't we uh, 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 speak speak up more? Why did we say the stupid things that we did? Things like, Lord, we want to sit one on your uh, right hand and one on your left from James and John, the sons of Zebedee. All of these things might have been going on in their, in their minds. They didn't know what to expect. They didn't even have a good sense um, on what the the of the, the, the nature of the fear is. We too don't know what the nature of the fear is. 
we have a general understanding of what a, 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 a virus is, but it's unseen. And there's no way that we can identify it until after, and after it has done its, its, its work. We too find ourselves locked in our homes for fear, not of Jewish leaders, but of viruses and threats to life and health. And yet, what does Jesus do when he comes? He walks right into that locked locked room. All of those things that they had used to protect themselves mean nothing, nothing to Jesus. He just comes straight into the locked room and says, Peace be with, with, with you. It's a word that we use a lot, particularly in church. One of the things that we perhaps miss most in this time is the sharing of the peace. And you at Christ, Christ the King know how to do it well. You do it with enthusiasm and genuine appreciation of one, one another. And we shake hands or perhaps uh, 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 we uh, uh, fist bump or or tap elbows, or whatever it might be, or even a, a simple wave. And we say, the peace of the Lord be, with, be with, with you. But here is where it really means means something. When we are deep in our grief, and our questions, our uncertainty about the future, perhaps our doubts, regrets about the past, in all of these things, Jesus comes and says, Peace be with, with you. And when he comes, he gives us the Holy Spirit, Spirit. We need this. It's interesting the way this whole thing works, works out. There's even a service of the forgiveness of sins, of letting all of those regrets and things that uh, 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 seem to, to, to tie us up simply fade, fade away. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But if you forgive the sins of any, including yourself, they are forgiven, set free, turned loose. These are the things that we depend upon for true peace, for true he healing, for true whole wholeness. All of these things are things that Je Jesus brings to us, even when we do not expect it, even as our doors are locked and closed against the world, Jesus comes in the midst of that to bring life. In the end, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do sense a note of fear, uh, ev even for those of us who, who want to put on a, a, a brave face. We still don't know these things. Take away that fear and give us faith and trust in you to know that all, all that will take, take place in our lives will be something that you um, allow to happen and that uh, regardless, you will be there bes uh, beside us. We give you thanks, God, for the wonderful gifts of knowledge and research and science. We ask that you would guide those who are hard at work in this 
day to find new new tests and treat treatments and and discoveries that will lead us into in um, in into a, um, a time when the when the restrictions are are uh, finally put away and we can enter full, fully into our public life life again we thank you that you hold both the unknown and the known in your hands and that by your grace we will come to discover discover them we pray for the sick those that are sick of many th uh, uh, things many kinds of diseases particularly we pray for those who are are uh, um, and currently suff suffering with covid 19 but we pray especially for Jenny, Haley, Chanel, Tommy, Pete, Mitch, Spencer, Jim, and Marilyn, Steve and Ingrid, Pastor Eldon, and Pastor Deb. We also give thanks for the joy in the Benson house household that that Lewis and Deb have have seen pic pictures of newly uh, uh, delivered uh, twin twin boys as their grand grandkids, both very 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 much in good good health. So we give thanks for for victories as well. We ask God for. An understanding in our public awareness that we need to depend upon you. It seems at times that in uh, uh, times that we are rich, most richly blessed, that we tend to forget you, and assume that this is all of our own own doing. In this time of stress we would ask that you would lead us to a closer uh, acknowledgement of your grace upon, upon us. We ask as well, God, for your blessing upon the call, call committee. It has been formed and brought, brought together and now begins its work. Give to them a sense of your presence, your wisdom and, um, and guidance that ultimately, when all is done by the committee and by the pastor who, who will be called to serve here, that a new day, day of ministry will take, take place here um, um, at Christ, Christ the King. Lord, remember us in, in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as, as in heaven. Give us today our, our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord uh, make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen in, um, um, indeed. Amen. <laughs>